Hello children. Yes, welcome once again. Uh, from the previous activity, we, I left you with a number to do. And let me hope you attempted it. But we are going to check ourselves first and see what we did. The question is, or was, Fred, John and Trevor owned a business. Fred's shares were 2 out of 11 of the total share capital. Uh, John's shares were 5 out of 11 of the total shares. So part A, what fraction of the shares did Trevor own? I'm just requesting you to pay attention and see what this question wanted. Compare your answer with the answer I'm having here. Then we know that we are moving together. Uh, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, how can we get Trevor's fraction? Given Fred, John, and Trevor. So there are three people that are owning the business. We are lucky that the share for Fred is 2 out of 11. Fred's share is known. Uh, the fraction for John, John's shares, were 5 out of 11 of the total shares. So the fraction for John is known. So what is remaining is Trevor. We don't know the fraction for Trevor. So I'm requesting you to pay attention to this. The fraction for Fred is 2 out of 11. The fraction for John, John, is 5 out of 11. So we have the fraction for Trevor, we have the fraction for John, and we don't have the fraction for Trevor. We have the fraction for Fred, we have the fraction for John, and we don't have the fraction for Trevor. So that is what we are looking for. To get the fraction for Trevor, children, we shall first get the total fraction of Fred and John. I repeat, we are to get the total fraction of Fred and John. Because there are three people contributing. Uh, there are three people owning the business. So we shall get the total of Fred and John. After getting the total of Fred and John, we subtract it from a whole in order to get Trevor's fraction. This is what I'm meaning. To get the fraction for Trevor, we shall get the total fraction of Fred and John. We get 2 out of 11 plus 5 out of 11. Boys and girls, when we are adding fractions, how do we add them? We are very lucky that the denominators are the same. So, what could be our LCM? Good. 11. Uh -huh. Because the denominators are the same, we take 11 as our LCM. Then, if the denominators are the same, we simply add the numerators. So, we get 2 plus 5. And what is 2 plus 5? We are lucky. Very simple. This is 7 out of 11. Now, this is the total fraction of Fred and John. So, to get the fraction of Trevor, to get the fraction Trevor owned, we shall get 11 out of 11, the total fraction 
minus the fraction of Fred and John, which is 7 out of 11. Aha, how do we work out this? The LCM is 11. Aha, uh -huh. the denominators are the same. So we simply subtract 11 minus 7. 11 minus 7. And what is 11 minus 7? 11 minus 7. Very good. This is 4 out of 11. So the fraction for Trevor, now we say Trevor, the fraction is 4 out of 11. And how many of you got 4 out of 11 as the fraction for Trevor? If you got 4 out of 11, thank you so much. That is the correct answer. And if you got another answer, please, I'm requesting you, try it again. And then you see what you are going to get. Thank you so much. When we talk about part B, that was part A. Now part B, if Trevor's shares were 56,000 shillings, what was their total share capital? We are very lucky that the amount of money given is for Trevor. And we have already finished to look for the fraction for Trevor. So we are going to use this fraction for Trevor. I repeat this. We are going to use this fraction for Trevor to help us get the total share capital. And therefore, we shall see that these four parts out of the 11 parts, they represent this amount of money. So we are going to say that four parts Trevor contributed or Trevor owned represents the amount of money which is 56,000 shillings. So if four parts represent 56,000 shillings, what about one part? So one part represents who can remind me? Who can remind me? If four parts represent 56,000 shillings, what about one part? Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. Somebody is telling me that this is 56,000 shillings divided by the four parts to get the amount of money for one part. Can we simply divide this? This is one. What did you get when you divided 56 by four? Divide 56 by 4. 5 divided by 4. How many, how many times can 4 go into 5? You discover that it is 1. And it is the remainder 1 making this one 16. And 16 divided by 4. What do you get? Uh -huh. This is 4. So you end up getting 14,000 shillings. So one part represents 14,000 shillings. What about the parts that represent the total share capital? Remember, Fred has 2 out of 11. John has 5 out of 11. Trevor has 4 out of 11. That means everybody is out of 11, out of 11, out of 11. So our total parts that represent the total share capital will be 11. Because that is the total parts. So we say that 11 parts, 11 parts represent, what will it represent? 14,000 shillings times 11. We have simple mathematics here and I want us to have a look at this. If I'm multiplying 14 times 11. Let's multiply it and see. Uh -huh. 1 times 4. This is 4. 1 times 1. This is 1, 1 times 4, 
this is 4 and 1 times 1 is 1. Then we add. We are adding. This is 4. 1 plus 0. 1 plus 4 is 5. And 0 plus 1, this is 1. So when you multiply 14 times 11, you get 154. So this one will be 154. But remember, we have our three zeros. So this is one, two, three. So this means that the total shares, the total share capital was 154,000 shillings. And that is all. If you got this one as the answer, thank you so much. If you pass part A and part B, Thank you for that spirit. If you did not make it, please follow the steps and see where did you go wrong. And you make the correction for that part. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's now go to our example. Rolita ate a half of an orange. She gave out a third of the remainder to her friend Pearl and kept the rest. They are words we have to interpret very well and then we work out. Rorita ate a half of an orange. She gave out a third of the remainder to her friend Pearl. You can see there is that word remainder. So we must be very careful. And kept the rest. What fraction did she keep? So something we must understand is there are three things in this question. The fraction Rolita ate, that is number one. The fraction she gave to her friend Pal and then kept the rest. I repeat, Rolita ate a half of an orange. So the first thing we need to know is the fraction Rolita ate. She gave out a third of the remainder to her friend. So we have to think about the fraction she gave out to her friend, Pal. That is the second fraction. And the third fraction we need to know is the fraction kept and kept the rest. So if she had a half of an orange and ate it, gave out a third of the remainder to her friend Pal and kept the rest. So what fraction did she keep? That is something we have to understand. And as let us now apply it. I told you that the fractions are very important. That what we use at home is what we apply in working out fractions. For example, look at my orange. Now this is the orange Rorita is having. And Rorita ate a half of it. So this is now the orange. Now Rorita ate a half of the orange. Rorita ate this. That means this is now done. It is not there. Meaning that the continuation of this question is now basing on what remained. Rorita ate a half. Now a half is done. And now I'm remaining with a half. So now, what happened? She gave out a third of the remainder. So of what remained? She gave out a third of this now. Of what remained to Pearl. So also Pearl did not take this half. Uh -uh. Pearl took a half. Uh, Pearl took a third of this. I repeat, Rolita had an orange. 
She ate a half of it. Now she's eating a half. Are you seeing what I'm remaining with, children? What am I remaining with? Thank you so much. I remain, uh, Rodita remained with a half. And now she gave a third of the remainder to her friend, Pearl. So what did Pearl eat? A third of this, a third of this, of the remainder. So we should have those things in our brain before we work out boys and girls let us now attempt the question after looking at this explanation so Rolita ate a half of an orange so the fraction for Rolita the fraction for Rolita Rolita ate a half if Rorita ate a half, she gave out a third of the remainder to her friend Pearl. So her friend Pearl, her friend Pearl got a third, one out of three of the remainder of the remainder don't you think there is something that is being demanded of us to do Paul ate a third of the remainder but remember Rorita ate a half so what was remained is something we have to look for first after Rorita eating a half what remained so this means that the whole orange which is one whole minus what Rorita ate a half we shall get what remained and this is what I'm meaning if I get a whole minus a half that means my whole will be two out of two minus one out of two what is the LCM of the denominators my denominators are the same which is a two so when the denominators are the same I subtract the numerators which is 2 minus 1. And what is 2 minus 1, children? 1 out of 2. Are we together there? So this is the remainder. But remember, we are dealing with the pearl. We don't know what the pearl got. So pearl got, we are still talking about pearl. Remember, Pearl got a third of the remainder, and the remainder is one out of two. So, Pearl got a half, a third of a half. Pearl got a third of the remainder, which is a half. We have looked for that remainder. Something very important you must understand here. Pearl ate a third of the remainder. But we don't know what remained. So if Rorita ate a half, let us have a diagram. Very simple. This is my orange and Rorita ate a half. So what remains? Don't you think that this is also a half? So a half remained. And that's why I've said two out of two minus one out of two giving us a half. So Pearl uh, got one out of three of a half. And what did we say of simple means? What did we say, children? Of simple means? 
multiplication. So we shall get a third times a half. And when you are multiplying fractions, what did we say? One times one. We multiply the numerators and the denominators together. So three times two. This is six. This means that Pal got one out of six. Let me have my summary here. Let me have my summary. I have Rorita. Rorita ate a half. Now I've seen that Pal ate a third of the remainder, which is one out of six. So Pal ate a third uh, of the remainder, which is a third of uh, a half, and we have got one out of six. One out of six. So we have the fraction Rorita eight. We also have the fraction Pal got from the friend Rorita. Now the question is, what fraction did she keep? If Rorita ate a half and gave out a sixth, what do you think will be the fraction she kept? Rorita had a half. Uh, Rorita ate a half. She also ate a half of an orange. Also uh, gave out a sixth to the friend Pal. So what fraction did she keep? This is something you need to know and understand. So to get the fraction she kept, we first look at a half and a sixth. She ate a half. And gave out uh, also Pal got a sixth. So the orange is remaining with some other parts. It is not yet complete. So we we shall first get the total of what Rolita ate and what was given to Pal, and we subtract it from the whole orange to get what was kept. There is that that remained, that was left, that she kept. So we shall get the whole orange, which is one whole, representing the whole orange, minus the fraction that Rorita ate, which is one out of two, plus the fraction that was given to Pal. There is something I want you to understand here. One whole minus the fraction, Rorita X, plus the fraction that was given to Pal. There we can get the fraction she kept. It is very important to write this fraction she kept. That is something you have to, to, to know very well. So that is the fraction we are looking for. So the fraction she kept. Fraction she kept. We are looking for the fraction she kept. Whereby we shall get a whole minus a half plus a sixth. Now, when you look at this bracket really, don't you think it is good to first add a half plus a sixth? Such that we get one answer here. Let us work it out and see. Let's get a half plus a sixth. We first work out that. What could be the LCM of two and six? I want you to work out from there and tell me what is the LCM of two and six? Because the denominators are, this, are different, we shall get the LCM of the denominators. What is the LCM of 2 and 6? Uh -huh. Work it out, work it out. Uh -huh. The LCM is 6. Then we shall get a half, which is our fraction, 
times the LCM, 6, we put them in brackets, plus mm -hmm, this fraction, a sixth, we multiply by the LCM. A half times the LCM, which is 6, plus a sixth times the LCM. And we work out that. This is once. 6 divided by 2 is a 3. This is once and this is once. So I'm remaining with 1 times 3 plus uh -huh, 1 times 1 out of 6. Are we together here? What is 1 times 3? This is 3 plus 1 times 1, 1 out of 6. And what is 3 plus 1? Very good. That is 4 out of 6. So boys and girls, 4 out of 6 is the total of a half and a sixth. But we want to get the total of a half and a sixth. We subtract it from a whole to get the fraction kept. Or the fraction that remained. The fraction of the orange, Lolita, kept. So we shall get a whole this time. If the total, of, the, the total fraction of a half and a sixth is four out of six, this means that the whole represents six out of six minus the total fraction which is four out of six what is the lcm uh-huh we are very lucky that the denominators are the same so our lcm of the denominators is six and when the denominators are the same we simply subtract the numerators so we shall get 6 minus 4. And 6 minus 4, boys and girls, this is 2 out of 6. And 2 out of 6 becomes the fraction Rolita kept. Boys and girls, you can simplify this fraction if you want. But if you don't want, you can also leave it where it is. It's fine. But you learn to reducing fractions from P5, P6. So we can also reduce this. And we say that 2 out of 3, uh, 2 out of 6, can be simplified. And what do you get? This is 1. And how many times can 2 go into 6? 3. So you will get a third. So whether you stop at 2 out of 6, it is fine. Whether you stop, whether you continue and reduce and simplify and get 1 out of 3, it's okay. Thank you so much. I hope you have been following all the steps. And this is our example. Now, good children, for the point of concern, or for the point of emphasis here, I want us to understand this, that... The fraction, please, I want you to pay attention, I'm emphasizing this. That the fraction, Rolita 8 is a half. So if Rolita 8 a half, that means there is what remained. There is that remainder. She gave out a third of the remainder to her friend Pearl. It means that Pearl got a third of the remainder of what remained that's why we have to look for what remained after Rolita eating a half of it so we shall get a whole orange which is represent uh, which represents a whole one whole minus a half and if you are getting one whole minus a half it means that a whole will be 2 out of 2 parts minus a half and we get 1 out of 2. 
So one out of two is what remained. But remember, Paul got a third of the remainder. So Paul got a third of a half. A third of what remained. And when you see this word of in mathematics, boys and girls, that word stands for multiplication. It is telling us, let us multiply a half of five, a half of ten, a half of twenty. That is a half times twenty. That is a half times... I'm getting the point. So we are getting a third of a half, whereby you have a third times a half. And when you are multiplying fractions, numerators are multiplied together and denominators are multiplied together. So the fraction Paul got is one out of six. So Rorita ate a half and Paul ate a sixth. To get the fraction Rorita kept, we shall get the fraction she ate plus the fraction she gave to Paul. And we subtracted from the whole orange Rorita had at first. That's why I've said a whole minus the fraction Rorita ate plus the fraction Paul got. I have first worked out a half plus a sixth. To help me first remove this bracket. And a half plus a sixth. I got 4 out of 6. And now 4 out of 6, this is not the fraction she kept. No. The fraction, Pal, uh, 8 plus the fraction, Rorita 8, is 4 out of 6, not the fraction Rorita kept. So to get the fraction Rorita kept, we shall get a whole, which is 1, out, which is 6 out of 6 minus what Rorita ate and what Paul got, which is 4 out of 6. That's how we have come to get 2 out of 6. I thank you so much for following all these steps. I want us to move together here. Chichodo did a half of his holiday work on Monday and a quarter of the remainder on Tuesday. If he completed 24 numbers on Wednesday, how many numbers were given to him as holiday work? I told you the other time that when you are working out fractions, boys and girls, you make sure that you read the question twice to help you analyze it. I'm reading it again, highlighting the key words here. Chichodo did a half of his holiday work on Monday. So what comes into your brain? Monday, there is a half. And a quarter of the remaining, of the remainder on Tuesday. So Tuesday is a quarter of the remainder. Think about that, boys and girls. Tuesday is a quarter of the remainder then if he completed 24 numbers on Wednesday, there is something very important. That Wednesday, we don't have the fraction, but we are given the numbers Chichodo did on Wednesday. So there must be something important we need to know. We need to know the fraction Chichodo did on Monday, we want to know the fraction of the holiday work for Tuesday and the fraction for Wednesday. And most importantly, the 24 numbers were done on Wednesday. And therefore, to get the numbers that were given to him as holiday work, all the numbers in total, we must use Wednesday and the respective numbers did on that day. I repeat this. The 24 numbers 
He did on Wednesday are the ones we must use to get the total numbers. Did all together as holy work. Let us now start. Sit properly. Pay attention. Chichodo did a half of his holy work on Monday. So we say that on Monday, the fraction Chichodo did is a half. And that one we are safe. A quarter of the remainder on Tuesday. So what could be the fraction of the whole day work Chichodo did on Tuesday? Boys and girls, we said, take note of this word, remainder. So on Tuesday, Chichodo did a quarter of the remainder. A quarter of the remainder. We don't know our remainder. Don't you think we can first look for the remainder here? Very simple. We can look for the remainder. Which remainder are we talking about? After doing a half on Monday, meaning that he did not complete all the work, all the numbers. So on Monday, all the numbers represented by a whole, and we subtract the numbers did on Monday, the fraction representing the numbers done on Monday, which is a half. And therefore, this whole will be 2 out of 2 minus 1 out of 2. As we said that, when we are working out fractions, now you can easily subtract from the previous examples. The denominator is 2, which is our LCM. And here we simply subtract the numerators because the denominators are the same. So what is 2 minus 1? That is a 1. So that means that after having, after doing a half on Monday, what remained is also a half. Are we together there? Then Tuesday is a quarter of what remained, which is a half our remainder. We are looking for Tuesday. We are looking for the fraction of the holiday work done on Tuesday, which is a quarter of the remainder. After doing the numbers on Monday, a quarter of the remainder was done on Tuesday. So we had to first look for the remainder. And the remainder is got from Monday. Very good. So this is a quarter of, what did we say of? In, in mathematics, think about multiplication times a half. And when we are apply, when we are multiplying fractions, we said that the numerators are multiplied together. So one times one, this is one times one out of this is four times two. Aha, one times one. That is 1. Out of 4 times 2, that is 8. So the fraction on Tuesday, it is 1 out of 8. So we know the fraction for Monday. Let us remind ourselves, Monday is a half. Uh -huh. Then, Tuesday, the fraction of the whole work done on Tuesday, we have looked for it. It is 1 out of 8. But remember, we said that we need the fraction for Wednesday. Reason being that the numbers given, the numbers that were done, we only know the numbers that were done on Wednesday. And therefore, we must look for the fraction that represents the numbers done on Wednesday. 
I repeat, we need to look for that fraction that represents the numbers done on Wednesday. So what could be the numbers done on Wednesday? The fraction representing all the numbers is one whole. So we shall subtract the numbers that were done on Monday and Tuesday. Meaning that we shall get the total fraction of numbers done on Monday plus numbers done on Tuesday. The fraction representing numbers done on Monday is a half. And the fraction representing numbers that were done on Tuesday is 1 out of 8. So the rest, the remaining numbers, were done on Wednesday. So we look for the fraction representing Wednesday. Now we together, boys and girls. Thank you so much. So let us first remove this bracket. And we get a half plus... 1 out of 8. This time you will help me in getting the LCM of these denominators. In P4, we worked out such fractions. In P5, the same. In P6, the same. Now in P7 as candidates, I, well know, it I know it very well that you can easily get the LCM of 2 and 8. Which one is that? Hey, ah, somebody is talking about 16. No, please, for you have just multiplied 2 times 8, which is not right. You get the multiples of 2 and get the multiples of 8. Then you get the LCM. How is there? Very good. The LCM is 8. So we shall get this fraction a half times the LCM, which is 8. Put them in brackets. We add. This fraction, 1 out of 8, uh -huh. times the LCM. Can we divide? How many times can 2 go into 8? This is 1, uh -huh. 4. So here I remain with 1 times 4. Plus, plus, this is once 8 divided by 8, 1. And this is also 1 times 1. Remember, we are having out of 8. Are we together there? Uh huh. So, what is 1 times 4? A 4 plus. 1 times 1, this is 1 out of, uh -huh, out of 8. And what is 4 plus 1? This is 5 out of 8. 5 out of 8 is the total fraction of a half plus 1 out of 8. But remember, we are subtracting this the total of half and, out of, and one out of eight from a whole. So we are having a whole minus five out of eight. And therefore, if this is a whole and we are subtracting five out of eight, this is eight out of eight minus five out of eight and what do we get huh, this is very simple for us boys and girls i said when the denominators are the same our lcm becomes eight and we now simply subtract the numerators which is eight minus five you are always very happy when we come to subtracting fractions with the same denominators because it is very simple and what is 8 minus 5? This is a 3. Uh -huh. Out of 8. 
boys and girls. Three out of eight is the fraction that represents the numbers Chichodo did on Wednesday. Now you discover that the fraction that represents Wednesday, the fraction is three out of eight. The question doesn't need the fraction for Wednesday. The question is, if he completed 24 numbers on Wednesday, how many numbers were given to him as homework? We had to look for the fraction representing numbers on Wednesday. Reason being that the question is giving us 24 numbers that were done on Wednesday. But we don't know the fraction representing Wednesday. And therefore, it was very important to look for the fraction that represents numbers done on Wednesday. So now, three parts out of eight parts represents numbers done on Wednesday. We are lucky that Chichodo did 24 numbers on Wednesday. So we shall use it and say three parts represent the 24 numbers that you are done on Wednesday. I repeat, we are using the fraction that represents the numbers done on Wednesday to get the total numbers that were given in the holiday work. So if three parts represent 24 numbers, what about one part? So boys and girls, from the previous examples, how do we get one part? Somebody saying, uh-huh, one part. Yeah, somebody saying 24 times three. Three parts represent 24. Now what about one part? Uh-huh, thank you so much. Somebody saying that we are getting 24 divided by three. And how many times? And three go into 24. Mm -hmm. This is one. Yes. Somebody talking about eight. Thank you so much. So one part represents eight numbers. So what about the total parts? What about eight parts? If Wednesday is three parts out of eight parts, and three parts represent 24, what about the eight parts, which is our total? So eight parts represent, eight parts represent the one part, which is eight numbers times eight. So these are numbers. Are we together there? We are looking for the total. We are looking for the total numbers that were done in the whole day package or in the whole day work. So, and 8 times 8 is 64. So, that is 64 what? numbers. That means that the holiday work, the holiday work had 64 numbers. As simple as that. This is how we approach such a number. It is very important to read those questions, most especially where you see the word of, where you see the word remainder, as simple as that. After having a look at example, I know it very well, children, that we can attempt the activity given. This time, I'm giving you some good numbers to do following the examples and i know if you follow the examples very well you will attempt all the numbers and you will get them correct i thank you so much for viewing let's meet in the next lesson thank you so much